Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we've got a pretty cool build. We're going to show you how to repair a broken hood on a red line. Now what we have here is a Mustang, and it definitely needs repair because the hood is completely snapped off. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you how to repair the hood and you can get parts for this either from a donor car or from the red line shop and they've got a pretty large uh, assortment of hoods for your cars that you can use to repair your old red lines well go ahead and grab your favorite adult beverage and join me in this episode now this one is going to be a little bit longer because there's a little bit more detail to show but please stick around to the end we've got a Diecast Builder Spotlight. I want to introduce you to somebody and have a little bit of fun here. So, without further delay, let's go ahead and get started to show you how to repair a hood on a red line. Here we've got this 1968 Mustang red line. The hood definitely is missing. I've gone ahead and I've drilled the car apart, but I ordered a hood from the red line shop, and this is what it looks like here. Now these things are made of a very soft metal. So you've got to be very ginger with these metal hoods because they can snap really easy. So you got to be careful here. Now the body here on this car is pretty well messed up with the paint. The hinges on the car are in good shape. But the hood, the pins actually snapped off. Well, I'm going to show you my version of how to repair this, and we'll get started here in just a moment, but let's go ahead and evaluate the rest of the parts. Here's the base. It's tarnished, but it's in pretty good shape. At least the axles are there and all in one piece. We'll take the wheels and do a wheel swap here. Windshield needs to be sanded down and polished and dipped in the gauzy, and we'll fix that. Interior's in good shape. A little bit of soap and water and a toothbrush, and we'll take care of that. Now the first thing you need to do is strip all the paint off the car. We're going to dip it in the embalming fluid here, aka citrus strip. Make sure you cover everything, the inside of the car, the outside of the car, and everything in between. Because that way there, if you plan on doing a color change, you won't have any of the old color showing through. Dip it in there, knock off any excess you possibly can. And then we'll let it set for a while until we notice that all the paint has bubbled off. That'll do it for now. Let's move on. We got the paint out of the stripper. Now we're going to go ahead and polish up the body. Now I've gone through and I've used one of these buffing wheels. Now these are like the Scotch-Brite pads that you buy. You just put it inside your Dremel. Now the different colors mean different levels of abrasion. And there's today's tip from your Uncle Polly. These wheels work fantastic. The thing is those are only good for about one car. And the harder you press on the wheel as you're buffing, the quicker it's going to disintegrate. So you've got to learn how much pressure you can apply without that thing flying apart on you. But they're fantastic wheels, and you can get these at my Amazon Marketplace page. Now we're going to show you the hood here that I got from the Redline shop. Now, like I said, these things are made from a different metal, so it's a very soft metal. So you don't want to gorilla these things in the car, especially if you think you can snap those pins into place, because, hey, you can't. You'll break them, you'll snap them, and they won't be any good. And you'll say all kinds of curse words, all right? So, again, being it's a soft metal, you may have to do a little filing here and there in order to get them to fit properly. Now, you can spread the hinges inside the car, but then you're taking a chance of snapping those off. So it's a little easier just to file down slightly the pin so you can get it to fit inside the hinge itself. Take your time, figure out what you need to file off, and then get it inside the pin. Or get it inside the hinge, excuse me. There we go, we'll widen that out. 
slide your hood in place. Now it is really tight there. Like I said, if you go to push those pins inside those hinges, they're going to snap. So you got to be careful. They're just sitting on the outer edge right now. So we've got to work our way with the file to get it to go into place. Now, the best way to file those edges is when the hood is open, if that makes sense. Because that way there you can get it into place and the hood will stay in place when it's closed. Just don't open it like 90 degrees all the way and it won't pop out on you. But it's not going to pop out on you anyways because I'm going to show you how to keep it in place. Take your time, file away the edges just a little bit, and you'll be able to fit it into those open hinges. This is only going to come with experience, folks. These videos that I make here to show you how to do this is just to give you a good start in order to learn how to do this. Again, you've got to make sure that that hood pin will fit in there without snapping. Now you can widen these out a little bit with that screwdriver, but man, you got to be careful because one hair twist over torque, that doesn't even make sense, but just one little twist above what you need to and it'll snap off. And again, like I said, you're going to start saying all kinds of words that you wouldn't want to say in front of your grandma. Little bit more filing. Get it to fit nice. You're going to have to keep test fitting. Still not going in. This is where you got to be really, really careful here, guys and girls. Now, another thing you don't want to do is once you get this soft metal hood in place. Now, some of you guys, when you're done painting the car, you like to stick it in a toaster oven or whatever heat it up and you know get to get that paint to dry don't if you use one of these hoods with the really soft metal I promise you it will melt okay ask me how I know this it will definitely melt on you Just a little bit more file and we're going to get this thing to fall into place. Look at that. Just about there. File a little bit, put it in place. File a little bit, put it in place. This way here you don't overdo it. That's looking pretty good. There we go, finally in place. But now we got it inside the hinge, I'm going to show you how to keep that hood in place now. See how it fits good? It's not going to fall out. That fits really nice in there. Now, notice though that the hood is a little bit longer than the front of the car. Now, Hong Kong hoods are different from U.S. hoods. Now, this car is a Hong Kong base, so this is probably a U.S. hood. And I don't know why they made them a little bit longer or a little bit different, but they did make them in two different locations, so that's part of your problem right there, or part of the problem. So, what I'm going to have to do here is file down the edge of the hood to get it to fit properly, and I'll show you how to do that also. Now we're going to glue the hood pins so they won't come out. So I've got a piece of tape over the front of the hood so it won't open up on you. 
here I've got a paper clip and I've bent one of the edges here and I'm going to show you where I put this here just like that and that's going to fit right over that pin and hold it in place now we're still going to have to bend the front of that paper clip and maybe cut it down a little bit more just to make a loop over the top of the hood pin and then we'll super glue that in place without putting glue over the hood pin itself if that makes sense you'll see as I do it now I did bend the paper clip a little bit more and again this is going to take a little bit of fitting on your part to make sure it goes in the right place now the part I'm holding there with the tweezers is a little bit too long yet it still has to be bent a little bit more and it's got to be cut down a little bit too so it fits a little bit flatter against that wall of the car I still want to cut that down a little bit more but you'll see as we go along that's looking really good I did get the hood pins in place or at least one anyway we'll have to do one on the other side but there it is it works nice now some people will use the hot glue gun some people will actually use super glue and I definitely won't do that because you won't be able to open it looking good you just repeat the same steps on the other side and that's how you do a hood repair now this is going to save you a lot of heartache now we're going to take a file and we're going to file the edge of the hood down in, in order to get it to match the fenders of the car that's looking good there just take your time and file that down and just keep stopping every so often and looking at it to make sure that you didn't file too much because once it's gone you're not gonna get it back so just take your time let's go ahead and speed this up you know how a file operates If you're running low on your adult beverage, now's a really good time to go get you another. That's starting to look really nice. We're just about where we need to be on this. Just smooth down the edges, sand it down a little bit, polish it up, and that'll look excellent. That turned out nice. I'm pretty pleased with that. Now we're going to use the flitz. I love this product. Put a good amount on your metal that you're going to polish and clean it up. Now, Please notice when I go to do the hood that I'm holding it down with my finger. These Dremels will catch the edge of your hood and if you're not holding on to it or being careful it'll snap back and it will break the hood pins. Now not just on the hoods you repair but on the regular hoods also. So please be careful when you're using your Dremel around things that open like hoods and doors and trunk lids etc. We've got that all polished up. Now we're going to put the base in a mixture of lime away and water, a 50 50 mixture. You don't want to let this sit in the lime away any more than three to four minutes at the most. If you do, you need to watch it closely because if you leave it in too long, it's going to turn the base of your car black. And it's really hard to get out once you turn it black. It bubbles up pretty good in removing the tarnish. But you've seen this before and it's kind of boring, so I went ahead and sped it up for you. Alright, let's go ahead and scrub it up. That's been about three minutes. Using a brass brush, 
Scrub all the tarnish off there. That's looking pretty good. We may not even have to buff this. Now let's go ahead and paint the body. Here we're going to use Spectre Flame Blue. Now this is a transparent paint and it uses the shininess of the body underneath to give you that luster that you're looking for when you're using these Spectre Flame paints. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell to be alerted to any future videos that come out. Make sure you go the entire length of the car and put down this light tack coat first. Once we get the tack coat down and we got the whole body covered with a very light mist coat, we're going to let it set for about 10 to 15 minutes to give that paint time to start to, to dry and to get sticky or, like I said, tack up. This gives the rest of the paint that you're going to spray something to hold on to so you don't get a lot of runs on the car. Those products from the Redline Shop are excellent. I love all their paints. Make sure you get all the hard to reach places under the fender wells and underneath the inside of the car. All right, after we let it set and dry, we sprayed some more coats on there and gave it a good saturation coat. Look at that finish. That is fantastic. I'm very pleased with how that turned out. That looks really nice. Now we're going to put that in the cabinet and we're going to let that harden up overnight. Now here we've got the base and we're going to do a wheel swap. Now I got this tool and the wheels from the Redline shop. Using your fingers or your thumbs here in this case with me, put equal pressure on the top and the bottom of the tire and press firmly. If you feel any unusual resistance or it feels like it's going to stretch the axle out, stop. Make sure you go ahead and cut the tire off at that point. Now we got two medium meats for the back and two small meats for the front. Just go ahead and put it on there slightly and then you can press it on the rest of the way with the red line tool. Man, they're going to look good in there. I put deep dish wheels on there also, which you can also get from the Redline shop. Use the Redline tool, put it in between the bearing and the body, and press firmly with your thumb and support the tool. That way there you can get the tire to seat all the way onto the bearing. That looks excellent. Those deep dish wheels are excellent too. I decided to put the deep dish wheels on because this is kind of a muscle car, so it'll look good. Let's go ahead and move on. Here we've got all the parts. We got the body. Look at that beautiful shiny blue paint job. That turned out fantastic. I'm very pleased. There's the hood repair. Look how nice that works. That's cool. Detail of the tail lights. That looks good. Here's the base, brand new tires from the Redline shop, those big meats in the back, that looks great. Interiors all nice and clean with soapy water and a toothbrush. And here's the windshield we dipped in the gauzy, that looks fantastic too. Let's put it together and we'll do our reveal. And here's what we started with. This original Redline Mustang, indefinite need of some TLC and a hood replacement. A lot of paint missing off this car and there was an awful lot of toning. But we took the car apart, we sanded it down, we buffed it down with those, with the wheels on the Dremel for the uh, Scotch Bright pads there, they turned out good. We put on the hood, did a hood repair. We sanded that down or buffed it down. We polished it up. We put some beautiful blue Spectre Flame paint on there. We did a wheel swap. We shined up the base and restored this red line to its original condition. And here's how it finished up. What a fantastic job in this car. Man, did that turn out sweet. Now, wouldn't you rather have something like this in your collection other than what they call a filler car? Now guys, 
They keep saying these filler cars are worth a lot of money like that. No, they're not. They're trash. That's why you fix them. And I show you how to do it. Now, if you want your cars to look nice in your collection until you can afford those ones inside the blister, I'd rather have this than those nasty-looking all paint-chipped-up ones. We took the car apart. We polished it up. We put the beautiful paint job on there, the brand new wheels, we did the hood repair, we cleaned up the windshield and the interior, and it turned out fantastic. This would be a welcome and beautiful addition to anyone's collection. I know that I'm very happy with this one too. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I read everything that you guys post. Now, Diecast Builder Spotlight. This is a, a new thing that I'm doing here to introduce you to other people that have die-cast building pages. And today, we're going to introduce you to Devil's Details Diecast. Now, check out Jamie's page. He does some fantastic builds, and he's really, really good at doing the Gaslands-type builds. You know, like the Mad Max cars and like that. But he does some beautiful work. So head on over to Devil's Details Diecast and check out Jamie's page. He, um, he's got a lot of good tips to offer you and, again, some fantastic builds. So go ahead on over and check him out. You'll, you won't be disappointed. This video was brought to you by the Redline Shop. The Redline Shop offers a complete line of decals, tools to take your car apart, put them back together, replacement hoods, replacement glass, those beautiful red line tires, and of course, the world famous Spectre Flame paints. Fantastic products. The Red Line Shop at www.redlineshop.com, where red lines come to life. I want to thank you for joining me here today on Diecast Graveyard. We had a great time showing you how to do these hood repairs, and we've got a few other different types of hood repairs and some other things that we're going to do here in the near future. Please give it a like and leave a really good comment and I'll read them all. You all have a great day and thanks again for coming to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Happy holiday season to you and your family.